Howdy, AP Precal. It's Ms. Kosh. Today, I wanted to work through Mr. Passwater's notes um, from 312. So my kids have already finished this. We've already tested on trig identities. Um, this is one of my favorite parts of the whole curriculum. Um, and I have printed out his notes, but I haven't looked at them. So we'll see if I know what I'm talking about today. Um, but I love it. And I wanted to work through his stuff and see if uh, make a video for those who are benefiting from my videos. Um, okay, so we begin, he begins here by giving us um, some more of the identities. So we know that sine is 1 over cosecant, the cosine is 1 over secant, tan is 1 over cotangent, cotangent is 1 over tangent, um, cosecant is 1 over sine, secant is 1 over cosine. I would expect by this point in the course, you know these, was that six identities? Um, these are referred to as the reciprocal identities. Um, and then um, because they're, each of these functions can be written as reciprocals of others. If this is brand new to you, go back and watch some of my older videos. But um, basically each pair has one co, is one way to remember who, who pairs up. These two right here, the fact that sine is equal to, excuse me, tangent is equal to sine over cosine and cotangent is cosine over sine. Um, these are the quotient identities because we can write one as a quotient of the other. Um, this is... By this point in the course, I think this, this should be old hat to you. I think you should know this really well. Um, notice I wasn't saying tangent of x over equals sine of x over cosine of x, but if you ever write it without the variable, it has no meaning. So I'm saying it a little shorter than what we would actually write. So um, I took off points just today on somebody's retest <laughs> because they left off variables. Okay, um, so then they want us to take this expression right here and rewrite it using tangent and no other trig functions. So let's see, what can we do? Um, this is where I, I watch my kids um, very closely and do their work here. So each step um, needs to be equivalent to what came before. Um, and this is being divided by, you could write this as one over sine of X. Okay, and so that means what we're, um, I tend to give you space going down the page, um, but we don't really have that. If I'm dividing by this fraction, I can multiply over by the reciprocal. And so this gives me a sine x times a one over cosine of squared of x um, times a, another sine of x. I don't know that I would actually write it this way, but here we go. Um, we end up with sine squared over cosine squared, which is equal to tangent squared. So that is um, f of x is an expression involving tangent and no other things. It's tangent, tangent squared of x. Um, I made a few assumptions for you that you knew that secant, is, secant squared would be 1 over cosine squared. I assume that you know that the square goes here. Um, I, what else did I assume? I don't know. Anyway, go watch other videos if you're like, what the heck did she just do? Um, I have a whole bunch of identity videos. Okay, so the next one, we write, we write it as an expression involving secant and no other trig functions. So I see that this is equal to 1 over sine of x um, times tangent is sine of x over cosine of x. Sine, the sine and the sine, they'll cancel out. Um, so sine divided by sine is 1. So this becomes 1 over cosine of x, which is equal to secant. And so that's just secant x, and we're done. Okay, then they talk about the Pythagorean identities. Um, and so the... On the unit circle, if this is your x coordinate and your y coordinate, um, the reason we learn the whole the unit circle is because, um, well, here, let me write it this way. This is, the radius is 1. This value is cosine of theta. This value is sine of theta. And so, oh, no, I was jumping to the identity. Um, <laughs> wow, that's a mess. I'm sorry. Um, but basically, the Pythagorean theorem says that cosine squared plus sine squared is equal to 1 squared. Um, and so this right here is such an important identity that at my school, we've nicknamed it. There was a teacher here who was my mom's age. She was fantastic. The kids loved her and hated her at the same in, in equal measure. Um, but she called this the big daddy and it has stuck. And we've called it that at our, in our building for years. So sine squared plus cosine squared equals one is a hugely important identity. And then what we can do is we can take that Pythagorean identity and divide everybody by cosine squared. So I get sine squared over cosine squared, and then cosine squared over cosine squared, and then one over cosine squared. So notice this part right here, doot, 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 there was the big daddy. And then we divide by cosine squared. Well, sine over cosine is tangent. So sine squared over cosine squared is tangent squared. Cosine squared divided by cosine squared is one. One over cosine squared is secant squared. And so this is a second version of the Pythagorean identity. Um, sometimes, okay, so I also, and then we can do the same thing where we divide by sine squared, and it gives us this one right here. 
Um, I have my kids write out, oh, that sine squared is equal to one minus cosine squared, and then write that cosine squared is equal to one minus sine squared because those things show up a lot. And then we would do the same thing, solve for one, solve for tangent squared, solve for one, solve for cotangent squared. Um, what was I gonna say next? Okay, big, big, big mistake. If I, I can't say, and I see this every year, but I'll see kids tell me cosine equals one minus sine, and I'm like, absolutely, positively not. So think in terms of, of numbers. So if I have, um, if I say that 16 is equal to 25 minus nine, well, is that true? Um, 16, 25 minus nine is 16, 16 equals 16. Well, these were all, I picked these numbers because they're all perfect squares. Does that, so this, this is telling me that four squared is equal to five squared minus three squared, but does it hold that four equals five minus three? Hopefully you'll know that five minus three is two, which is not equal to four. So you can't just get rid of all the square roots and hope everything works out nicely because it doesn't, math doesn't work that way. Okay, now let's see if we can find another identity. Oh, and this is the one I was not good about teaching. So I probably need to go back and figure this one out. Um, so if this is x and this is one, we can use Pythagorean theorem to find that the other link here is one minus x squared, the square root of one minus x squared, because basically we have um, x squared plus y squared equals one squared. Okay, so then I can solve for y, and then I can say, okay, well, what if that's y squared, what am I doing? Okay, that is what I'm doing. And that's that length. And so now we can do um, sine is going to be this over 1. Um, and so the inverse of sine, so theta would equal the inverse of sine, inverse sine of um, 1 minus x squared. Yeah. Which leads us to the identity, the cosine. Okay, so the inverse of cosine is going to be, well, cosine, okay, so cosine of theta is just equal to x over 1, and sine of theta is equal to the square root of 1 minus x squared. Okay, and so now I can take the inverse cosine to solve for theta, and I can take the inverse sine to solve for theta, and then those are the same theta so that I can set them equal. And so that's where this identity comes from. Yeah. And then we can manipulate, we could draw our triangle differently to get the other set. Um, okay, so I, I'm not quite sure, to be honest with you, how they're gonna ask these sorts of questions. I haven't really seen them on AP Classroom, but maybe I need to go back and look, so we'll find out. Okay, the function uh, is given by tangent over cosecant. Okay, so this, so I can say the tangent is sine over cosine is being, well, maybe we could write it this way. It's being divided by one over sine. Um, okay, and so then what do I want? Well, I have to multiply by, from dividing fractions, I multiply by the reciprocal. My kids would say, keep, keep change, flip. So keep, change, flip. And then this becomes sine squared x over cosine. Okay, that's equivalent to what came before. Um, and then we know from our Pythagorean identity, do, 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 that sine squared is equal to one minus cosine squared. And so this equals one minus cosine squared x over cosine x. Um, and we could split this into two different fractions if we wanted to. One over cosine x minus, well, cosine x. Um, we write f of x as a fraction involving powers of cosine and no other trig functions. I think this is the answer they're looking for. Um, this is where I like for identities to be prove that this equals this or something like that so that you have to show me the steps on how you got there, but you know where I want you to end up. Um, but I think this is, the way he wrote this question is probably how AP is going to write it. Um, I think free response FR, FRQ um, 4 maybe look like, might look like that. Okay, and then we have more um, identities, the sum and the difference, and then the double angle identities. Um, so, let's see. Okay, on this one, this allows us to put two equations together, alpha plus beta or alpha minus beta. And so on this one, I like to remember sine, cosine, cosine, sine, and the same S-I-G-N, and I always spell that out because there's S-I-N-E, sine, and S-I-G-N, sine. Um, so it's sine, cosine, cosine, sine with the same SIG, and AP will not give you these formulas, and I imagine that they will, you will need to know them. Um, well, yes, I, th I can't imagine that they won't put them on the test. I would be shocked. Okay, 
Um, cosine of alpha plus beta, it's cosine cosine opposite SIG and sine sine is how I like to remember that one. So the sine one is sine cosine cosine sine with the same SIG in. The cosine one is cosine cosine sine sine with the opposite SIG in. The plus here corresponds with the minus, the minus with the plus. Um, and then we work out these different identities. You've got um, one, two, three versions that we manipulate. We can manipulate the Big Daddy. We, can, we get this first one and then we manipulate the Big Daddy. Um, I have a better explanation of all of this on my YouTube channel, so go search up advanced identities on my channel and you'll have a better, <laughs> a better teaching. Um, okay, so this one is, um, this can be expressed as, we could think of like, this is, um, if we don't know what to do, we could say let u, not me, but u equal pi over 14. That's so funny to me. Um, and this is like saying 2 sine u cosine u, which is equal to, this right over here. So I can come along and say, well, this would be equivalent to sine of 2u. Well, now I need to plug u back in. And this gives me sine of, well, 2 times pi over 14 is going to be pi over 7. That's a 7, pretend. Um, so sine of pi over 7. The function is given as this, which the following is an equivalent form. Okay, so this is the one where we have three versions that we can pick from. So this is not it because that was trying to use the sine double angle formula, and we don't want that. Um, four minus two, okay, so notice that the cosine part is positive, so not that. And um, the cosine here is positive, that's promising. This one, the cosine plus, it's not plus, it's a minus in the formula, so that's no good. Let's just double check. So if I say four times cosine two x, cosine of two x can be expressed as two cosine squared x minus one. When I distribute through, I get this. So that's my answer. Okay, which of the following is equivalent? Okay, so this is cosine, cosine, sine, sine. So what that means is where it's gonna be cosine of these two angles with the opposite SIG in. So this is two pi over 16 and one pi over 16. So this becomes cosine of three pi over 16. And there it is. Uh, oh, we're down to the last page. Okay. The figure shows um, uh, an angle centered at the origin with an angle measure theta and standard position. The terminal ray of the angle intersects at point P. The coordinates of P are this. What is the value of sine? Oh, nice. Okay. So the what I like to do here is this is 5, this is 12, this is 13. What I would always do is have my kids write out, okay, sine of theta equals cosine theta equals, and I used to also make them tell me tangent of theta equals because the tangent formulas were something I used to teach, the tangent double angles, but now they're not. And so anyway, you can write it or not, whatever. Um, but sine of this theta is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And now they're asking us to find sine of two theta. Well, we don't know two, sine of two theta, but we do know sine of theta and cosine of theta. And sine of two theta is equal to two sine theta cosine theta, which is two times, what did we just write down? Sine of theta is 13 over, I lied, 12 over 13. And cosine is five over 13. Two times five is 10. That's 120 over 169. <coughs> there you go. Okay. Um, so, okay. Same idea with this one. If this is the point um, negative 5 root 11, um, A, oh, and this, they're telling us this is 6. Okay. My, my radius is 6. They're giving me this one is this is 2, this is root 5, and this we know to be 3. Does that make sense? 4 plus 5 is 9, which, yes, that works. And then 25 plus 11 is 36. Did you see how I used Pythagorean theorem to check that? Okay, so I can come over here. This is alpha. So I can say sine. I might set up my, my work. Sine of alpha is going to be root 11 over 6. Cosine of alpha is negative 5 over 6. Keep in mind, always keep the radius positive and just let the plus or minuses with the, um, the x and y values and everything will take care of itself. Over here, sine of beta is equal to root 5 over 3. Cosine of beta is equal to 2 over 3. Okay, so now I'm set up to answer whatever they might possibly ask us. I might need more paper. Okay. Um, so cosine of 2 alpha, 
Um, what would I do? I would use one of the three versions that we have. Maybe let's do this. Two cosine squared alpha minus one. So two cosine of alpha is negative five over six. I have to square that and then subtract one. Um, and so this is two times 25 over 36 minus one becomes 25 over 18 minus 18 over 18. What is that? Uh, 25 minus 18, is that seven over 18? I can do the hard math. Sometimes I forget the easy math. And there's the first one. That's what I found. Um, okay, find sine of alpha plus beta. Let's keep going. So sine, so the sine of, this is sine, cosine, cosine, sine. You could write it out this way, and then it's the first angle and then the second angle. And then it's the same S-I-G-N in between them. And what did we have? Well, we can look back up here. This is root 11 over 6. Cosine of beta is 2 thirds. Can you see everything that I see? I think you can. Okay. Um, plus cosine of alpha, negative 5 over 6. Sine of beta is root 5 over 3. I see um, 2 root 11 over 18. And I see a negative 5 root 5 over 18. Oh, you can't see what I did. You can write it this way or you could put it, um, I don't see any reason not to take both of these answers. Either one should be fine. Okay, um, so then now we need to do cosine of alpha minus beta. So the cosine one is cosine, cosine, oh, so beta, sorry, uh, sine, sine, alpha, beta, excuse me, <coughs> With the opposite S-I-G-N, so if it was a minus here, we want a plus here. And then, okay, looking back at my everything that I set up before, this is negative 5 over 6. That's a 5, pretend. Okay, cosine of be uh, beta is 2 thirds. Sine of alpha is root 11 over 6. Sine of beta is root 5 over 3. Okay. Uh, negative 10 plus root 55 all over 18 makes me happy. All right. Um, identities take a lot of practice, um, especially if you want to do, solve some of the, or prove some of the trickier ones. I love them. I think they're great. So go practice and let me know how I can help you. Good luck.